Hey everyone, uh, I'm doing a little behind the scenes tutorial on how I shot uh, the photo that you guys obviously saw in the uh, preview of this this post here on Patreon. This is a Patreon only video and today I'm in the studio, um, aka my garage slash side shed thing and I have a red backdrop and I'm shooting some St. Cloud bourbon. St. Cloud and it's their um, special uh, cask strength release, the black label one, that is actually not out yet, but it is coming soon. I have my trusted, can trusted camera <laughs> uh, hooked up to several things, a remote trigger. I, when I'm doing studio shots like this, I always shoot on uh, using a tripod and keeping things in the exact same space because the technique I use for editing is called light painting and it's basically combining several shots into one so that I can really control the exposure of each element that I'm trying to to go for um, and I'll walk you through a little bit about how I did that I have my there it is a uh, velo remote which goes to the strobe light that I'm using and then I have a cord hooked up to my laptop. There's an apple, as you can see, I'm using in the scene. Um, and I have the cinnamon sticks. I actually just cleaned these up and I was like, oh, let me shoot a little bit about how I did this. Um, and then you can see some of the unedited shots right there. Um, backdrop could use a little bit of ironing. I tried to iron them. Sometimes they're pretty tough. So clean that up in post. Um, but then you can see just some of the differences of moving the light around. Um, and you'll notice my light source is actually in this shot, uh, which is fine. I can remove that and I can show you what I did there. And then um, playing around and I realized even though I had cleaned my bottle, this is a great lesson, even though I had already like wiped my bottle down, um, just being in my side shed has a lot of dust. So <laughs> Over the course of me shooting this bottle, it um, when I started to do the actual bottle shot, like detail stuff, it was super dusty. So I had to go back and clean it again, uh, wipe it. I kept it in the exact same spot, and then uh, and was just like lightly wiping it off because it's just dust. Um, but you can see like exposing for the apples, the cinnamon sticks that were on there, and the bottle itself. Uh, wanting that kind of moody, you can tell it's on a piece of wood, um, but you don't really need to see the whole the whole wood for all the detail. You have a nice uh, halo effect in the background, and you're exposing um, for the elements on the bottle. On the phone, it looks way more blow, blown out than it actually is. But um, and then stuff like this, I can. That's an easy uh, Photoshop job right there. And there's still some dust, which is just. It's pretty dusty in here, which is not ideal. Um, currently doing some house renos. So I think it's a really good example too, though, of you don't need a ton of space. I literally, this is a sheet <laughs> that I have draped down um, and it is hung up. I created this kind of pallet wood wall in my side shed, which uh, I'm about to actually tear this all down and use that for the next shot. Um, and then I have a different texture, which is just cement board over there you can see screwed up so i have a couple textures in my side shed but all of my brewing equipment is there um i mean insulation this is legit like where i store my lawn mowers and i actually have my lawn mower out of the the room um and i've converted it into a mini studio to get some shots done but you can see it's kind of a mess right now so we're under renovation so um point being you can create a little mini photo session or studio anywhere um, that you're at. So let's get into some of the technical stuff. I'm using my 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Uh, I'm zoomed out uh, a bit. I trying to think what I see what I'm zoomed out to. Um, actually, I can probably see on my, I am at 48 millimeters. So about 50 millimeters and these zoom lenses, like you're usually not at like a specific, unless you're all the way or open or closed or zoomed in or zoomed out um, 24 to 70. But I'm doing that because again, I'm in close quarters and uh, 50 millimeters is a great focal length for something like this. And you can see the, I get enough of the scene in there to give that idea. 
of this is in a space, um, but really still focusing on the bottle itself. Using my Nikon D610, uh, and again with the, the 24 to 70 lens, um, Velo, I think that's how you say it, uh, remote right there, along with the Velo mount on the hot shoe on the top, linking to my super makeshift. And this is, is one thing, um, I'm not personally embarrassed by this because I, I like being uh, innovative, but this is what I'm using to shoot with. So I've actually strapped a box and you can see I'm slitting the opening. So I'm making a pretty narrow opening for that light. And that's what actually gives me the ability to control where the light is hitting. Without doing that, this entire scene would literally look like how I'm showing on my phone right now. It would be completely lit up and you wouldn't get that really cool directional light. You would just have way too much light. So yes, you can buy expensive um, directional things that help you filter the light. There's grids and all sorts of fun stuff that go on top of the cameras. Um, I personally, like, yes, I, I should probably get some of those things as I do more of this studio work, but um, there's also ways to kind of get around it and be creative. There's a lot of limitations with obviously doing something like this. And this light is like, super cheap. This Ace 100. Great lights. These have been super, super uh, reliable for me. And I'm only now starting to get more and more into the studio work. So I'll probably invest eventually in some um, higher end gear. But if you're just starting out and you want just something to play around with in the studio, this is the way to go. These, this, I got two of these lights um, with an umbrella for each and the power cords and everything for a hundred bucks, I think, or maybe it was 150, but pretty cheap. And they've been the most reliable um, and inexpensive lights I've ever used. I've used some really expensive ones and yes, they are amazing. There's ones that you can control the, the Kelvin temperature on and the color of the light and all that stuff. And yes, those are absolutely incredible. Um, but for just some basic studio and, and learning the process, these are these are really good. I'm definitely at a point where I could use some more advanced uh, setup and a, and a dedicated studio space. But again, you can't let that be the excuse for not creating uh, the best work you can. So you can set this up super easy, like I said. Um, but yeah, let me show you a couple um, ways of shooting. So basically all I do, and I'm not gonna actually pull a trigger because I'm doing this with both my hands, but I have the light in my hand and I'm moving, I like to move it around so that I can have control and kind of, I have it tethered to my laptop so I can see directly when I take the photo, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that did. Oh, this is what that did. Oh, I gotta reduce that glare and I can adjust on the fly. The other way of shooting bottle photography is setting up a bunch of lights and getting it exactly how you want it all in camera. Again, if I had more expensive, legit gear, then yes, I could obviously accomplish that. Um, but having some kind of cheaper gear, then this is a, a way to kind of get around that. Um, but it also, like I said at the beginning, gives you a lot of control over everything that you're exposing. So if I wanna expose that front emblem, I'm gonna take a photo that's just focusing, like I'm only worried about that emblem on the front of the bottle. Um, the top label around the neck, I'm gonna take photos that just get me what I want there, the, the top bottle. So it ends up being a little bit more time consuming um, because you are exposing for each section of the bottle. But at the end of the day, I think it creates a little bit, um, uh, it gives you a little bit more creative control over the outcome of the image. Um, so like I said, I showed you here just like a couple examples I did. Um, and then earlier on, here I'll show you an example. I did this on purpose to show, um, but if you don't have that box on it, oops, clicked on the wrong one. Um, wait, where'd that go? Oh, what the, okay. There we go. If you don't have that like, uh, directional on there. This is what the image looks like. So it's not super um, exciting. And this was me just setting up and trying to get the exposure right. Um, but not super engaging or exciting. Um, but then you can also open up the box a little bit more and play with exposing some of the background. Um, but then you can see like right here where I'm actually shooting to expose. I'm trying to get some, some detail down there in the bottom of the bottle. Um, 
and I'm getting really close and like this highlight right there I might pull from this image. Um, not those. Yeah, right here. So, and then you can see I'm getting some nice color in the, the bottom of the bottle, that reflection's still there. Even though my light is positioned in a slightly different way, I might take that and pull that into a shot like this, just to give a little bit of extra detail in there. Um, but again, it's something I can play with in post, and I have the photos if, if I want. I might, honestly, this photo I like a lot all, as is, um, just with some cleanup stuff, and then like probably taking another photo that I exposed for this label and bringing that in. But other than that, I really do like the mood of this shot. Um, so I might, I probably won't do a ton of alterations, but when I get into post, if I want to, I have the other photos to kind of play around with. And I, I like that um, ability to control my photos a little bit more than just setting it all up and taking one shot and then, you know, feeling at the moment like I got the right shot, but then later on, not being able to play with it. So I really like this direction, this way of shooting. And I will do a video uh, shortly to show you the editing process of this image. But hopefully that kind of helps explain a little bit of my process and how I shoot and do some of these a little bit more involved studio setups. And again, super easy setup. I mean, this is a block of wood that I had um, in my, in my, uh, uh, side shed here and you know I, I have to clean up a little bit over here so it doesn't look like a crappy block of wood but pulled this stuff together cut an apple up um, have some cinnamon sticks and made something that I think is is pretty exciting so hope you guys enjoyed and hope you uh, learned a little something comment below what you um, you know any studio work that you're doing or if there's anything you'd like to see uh, technique wise, I can, I can definitely show you guys some more. All right. Thanks.